I don't know if this thing is working. I think it is. Let me see. I think I'm live. What's happening, world? Uh, I'm going to try a little something different. I figured uh, Easter morning is probably the best time to try this thing out. What better day than to, uh, you know, preach the good word. Uh, this is just going to be a kind of podcast. I just don't really have a guest. This is just kind of like a thing that I'm going to be doing by myself. Um, so I'm going to start doing live streams, you know what I mean? I want to start connecting with uh, with y'all. I want to start showing some authenticity. I want to start being real, you know? I want to start just expanding my horizons when it comes to this whole YouTube thing and, and uh, yeah, connecting with the spiritual community. And uh, I know I'm speaking, and I don't think I have any viewers right now, but it's okay. I'll talk to myself. I like hearing the sound of my own voice. This is cool. Uh, but the whole topic I wanted to uh, touch upon on this thing is uh, in the spirit of Easter, the theme of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the man himself, and what that means in a 2021 world. So what, at least what that means to me. Um, <clears throat> I hope the mic's coming through okay. I didn't really check the audio on this. We'll see afterwards, but I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to talk to myself. These are just going to be ramblings of my own inner thoughts. And uh, you want to join along? You want to listen to what's going on in Gary's head? That's cool. If not, then uh, I'm still be here just talking to myself. Nothing wrong with that, right? We all talk to ourselves. But uh, yeah, excuse the apple. I kind of want to keep my blood sugar going when I do this. I like apples. Apples are my favorite fruit. So, getting right into it. Uh, the resurrection of Christ, in a 2021 sense, the second coming of Christ, is a second coming that we all come to. It's a realization of the truth that's inside of all of us. It's not literally the man himself coming back and saying, Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Jesus. What's up? Y'all gotta love each other. It's that the spirit of that man... The spirit of his message coming back to all of us. The spirit of what that means to love your brother and love your sister coming to us. That's what the resurrection is. That's what the second coming is. It's it's an internal second coming. It's, a, it's, it's something that we all come to inside of all of us. That's what the second coming is. We all have the potential to follow Christ, but not follow as in follow him on Instagram or follow, you know, bow down to him as an icon. No, he wouldn't want that. What it means to follow Jesus Christ is it means to follow in his footsteps. Whatever Jesus did to love everybody, uh, that's what we have to do in our own way. In our, We all have our own unique situations. We all have our own um, uh, things that we go through in this incarnation. But we have to take the teachings of what Jesus taught into our own and incorporated into our own life that's the second coming that's uh, that is the message of jesus that's what he wanted he didn't want like jesus didn't create christianity the people all around him created christianity and said he's the one when jesus was like was like no you're the one we are all the one and everyone was like whoa he's the one but it just got lost in translation over thousands and thousands of years uh Hold on, I got a warning. The stream's current bitrate is lower than the recommended bitrate. We recommend that you use a stream bitrate of 4,500. I hope everything sounds all right. I don't know. YouTube's sending me some some, some warnings here. But, uh, yeah, man. We were all capable of coming to that second coming. It's not... That's pretty much what I'm preaching. That's what this whole platform is about. We're all capable of... of of following in Jesus Christ's footsteps. And Jesus wasn't the only one that was preaching this. It just, like, he seems to be the most popular one in the world. There's plenty of ascended masters in the world that are preaching the message of selflessness, of love, man. It's that simple. It's not even complicated. Well, why do we why do we complicate this thing? It's just be selfless, you know? Like, give a little bit up of yourself for somebody else. That's what Jesus did. He gave his, his whole self for everybody else. He, he, he died for all of us. That's the whole story behind it. Is that he sacrificed himself in his message so that he can spread it to the world. 
that's what the meaning behind Christianity is. Um, and we are all capable of doing that. We don't have to nail ourselves to a cross, but metaphorically, we do that in how we act. In our in, in all of our actions, are we, we take sacrifice to make somebody else's life a little bit better. You know? It's a symbol. The cross is a symbol. Jesus is a symbol. But the problem is we get lost in those symbols. It's craziness. It's a, we, we, like, what are we doing? We don't, we don't want to get, the, like, the symbol is supposed to translate into you, into your heart. And then from there you act. It's nuts, man. It's nuts. Like, like we're just, we're so far disconnected from what Jesus actually taught. Like he, we we see him as an icon, when I'm pretty sure I don't know. I think he said like you know no idols. That's what the whole thing's about. You don't idolize anything but God in yourself, in love, not not him. Like he is like, like he is king, but he, his message is king more so, and that's what he would argue as well. It's not him necessarily. You don't, no one don't bow down to the icon of him, the image of him, which. The image of him isn't even actually the image of Jesus. It's actually one of the Pope's sons, if anyone's interested in that. It's, I forget, it's like Pope, one of the Pope's uh, sons, he had a huge ego, and he thought his son was the personification of Jesus Christ. So the popular image of the white guy with long hair, supposedly, I don't know if this is a conspiracy or not, supposedly is, um, that's the that's the image that we have of Jesus. But like, let's be honest, man. You really think Jesus Christ looked like uh, a white guy from the middle of Massachusetts? Nah, man. This was a, this was in the Middle East. Like he didn't look like that. Like the popular image of Jesus that we see in statues everywhere. That wasn't him. Like, come on, man. Not that it matters. Not that the image matters. Like I said. But on a side note, that's not even his image. Like, come on, bro. And everyone just like, oh, you know, we all just get lost in like doing what we're told and like believing. That that's the truth, and like, come on, man, you gotta think, like, think critically, like, like you know, there's a difference between reading the teachings of Christ and just taking it at face value, and you know, going to church every Sunday and just doing what you're told because you fear going to hell, and then actually internalizing those teachings and incorporating them into your life, your 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 the present moment, so that you can live on in heaven on earth. Heaven isn't something after you die. Maybe it is. Hell isn't something after you die. Maybe it is. I don't know. Nobody knows. But I, what I do know is heaven and hell is right now. It's all right now. It's not something that is like, oh, I better do this. I better not uh, do that or else I'm a bad person. I don't want to sin because I'll go to hell. And it's just like creates this like culture of fear. Like, no, man. It's right here, right now. Heaven and hell is a mindset. And that's what Jesus was talking about. The kingdom of heaven is within, bro. That's the message. We all are capable of coming to that realization of knowing that heaven, it's a mindset, it's a frequency that we are able to reside on constantly. And it's easier said than done, obviously. You know, the world's crazy. Um, we live in a very, very, uh, uh, a world of a lot of distractions. We live in a world that will not tell you that. You don't wake up in the morning and, and know that the kingdom of heaven is within. If you do, then bravo to you. It's it's a, it's a tough thing to reside on at all, all times. But just knowing that it's there, knowing that the kingdom is in our hearts at all times, that's all you need, man. That's really all you need. Cuz like you can it's always something that you can go back on. It's always something that no matter how bad or how shitty your life gets or you think it gets, there's always that that peace and that stillness that lies within. That's the kingdom of heaven. It's knowing that no matter what happens to you, no matter what, like no matter what, physical, emotional pain, sometimes it sucks, but no matter what happens, the kingdom of heaven is within. And that's why we have to meditate or do whatever practice you do to you know, explore our creativity. Um, I don't know, whatever you do, do yoga, tai chi, however you cultivate that is up to you. But it's all up to us to cultivate that kingdom of heaven within. And then, once we cultivate that kingdom of heaven within, we create the kingdom of heaven without. We create it for each other in this world, and we create heaven on earth. That's, that's the message. It's simple. We overcomplicated over 2,000 years. 
like somehow the message has been convoluted into a a message that has been translated into a, a means of controlling population, a, a means of fear. Don't do this, you're going to go to hell. Like, come on, man. That's not love. Christ is all about love. The church, it seems to be, it's not about love. It's about control. At least that's what it's, it's morphed into. It's about controlling population. When... That's so far disconnected from Christ. They use it's 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 such an evil thing. They use the image of Christ, an ascended master, the maybe the ascended master, as a source of of control to put fear into the population, and especially in the past. Like n- nowadays, it's not so much. People are like, all right, dude, like you know, they're catching on to the the BS. But in the past, man, the the Catholic Church controlled the world. It was like it was the Catholic Church and then the kings. You know what I'm saying? It's still going on today, but it's it seems to be total opposite. Total opposite of the teachings, of the true teachings, of the word, of the man himself. It's craziness, man. I mean, I found it. It's capable. I think we're all capable. If I'm capable, I'm just some regular dude. Like I'm not anything special. I'm just some dude. I don't got anything. You know what I mean? I, I don't... I just I just meditate, do yoga, maybe some psychedelics here and there. You know what I'm saying? Maybe smoke a little bit of weed. But it, we're all capable of finding that, whatever way, whatever the thing that you do, we're all capable of finding that kingdom of heaven. And that, once you find it, it's salvation. You've saved yourself, man. Knowing that there's a greater purpose for being here, noting that, knowing that that th- there is uh there is a purpose for your being. Knowing that there's a purpose for all of reality, all of your existence, what more do you want, man? That's what we're lacking. We all seem to be searching for purpose in our life, whether it's through, you know, we search for purpose on the outside world. We search it through the material world. We search it through validation, uh, Instagram likes, other people, money material possessions we just want people to like us we search for purpose in others in other things nah man you're never gonna find purpose in any of that like real purpose you're never gonna find out what the, the purpose is to, for your existence in any of that that's not the truth you find that inside and that 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 purpose is unspeakable even though i'm speaking about it right now that that purpose that you cultivate within yourself is something that is just it's like an alignment it's something that it's a frequency that you align yourself to and from there you realize the why why we're here what it means to be a human being how you serve because that's another th- big thing about purpose when you come to like re- that realization inside of yourself is you realize that we're all just servants we're all here to serve the greater purpose <laughs> we're all here to be instruments to the greater purpose the 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 process of this universe and the world you know, we're all here to just um, be the best version of ourselves. And through being the best versions of ourselves, we serve others and create that world. It's all relates. It's like you find the kingdom and then we create the kingdom without, within and then without, yin and yang. Yeah. That's all I got to say about that, man. Like, it's, it's, it's possible for everybody. That's the thing. But you have to you have to decondition yourself first from this crazy ass world that is not aligned with the way. The world we live in right now is not aligned with that whatsoever. I mean, it is. Some people are aligned with that, um, but it's we got a long way to go. But we're all capable of doing it. And it's funny because it's just like it's it's easy. It's simple. I wouldn't say it's easy. It's simple. It's a simple like flick of the switch in your head. To kind of like, oh shit, like my life means something. I have some kind of purpose here. I have some, uh, my life is a journey. It's a, it's a simple realization that you can come to. But it seems to be hard to get to for some reason. It seems to be a hard thing to decondition our brain. To decondition um, the way that we've been essentially brainwashed. <laughs> It sounds horrible, but we have been, we have been brainwashed since a very young age, and that's just 
that's just being human. Like, you know, we, we take in energy and we take in information and uh, we, we form like clay into this being of a human, right? Uh, but the problem is we are formed into a being of ego. We are formed into our egos. It's a false identity. And it's not aligned with the way. It's not aligned with God. It's not aligned with the universe, infinite consciousness, whatever you want to call it. It's not aligned with that. Our world isn't aligned with that right now. That's what we're missing. We're not aligned with spirit. And the tough part, the hard part, is 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 first demolding yourself from the mold of the ego and then building yourself back up. Because that's messy. That's long and messy. And it hurts. <laughs> There's pain involved. There's darkness involved. But on the other side is light and truth. It's a... That's just like, oh, excuse me, that's just the the journey of what it means to be a human being. Once you align yourself, you realize that that's what it means to be here. That's what it means to incarnate on earth. And we mold ourselves into a being disconnected of the ego, knowing it's still there, but not knowing it's not our identity, and connecting with love. Love is our true identity. And it's not love like passion or pleasure, love or lust. It's love as in like, I mean, you can't explain it. You just know what love is. It's true selflessness. It's being there for others. It's serving others in the best way that you can. That's, that's aligning with the way. And we all do that in our own way. You just have to find it first. But once you find it, that's the first step. That's, that's like I said, you, you have to find it first, and then you act, and then you walk the path. And from there, life just becomes a journey because you realize that there's a greater purpose than just uh, gaining material goods or trying to impress others. Like there's a way greater purpose for what, what's going on here. But I also think that I'll, somehow, like, I, I go back and forth between, like, all right, if there's a greater purpose and, like, damn, I got to get my shit together. But then I also think it's important to not take life so seriously either. And maybe not take your manifestations of your ego so seriously. What to take seriously is love, you know? I don't know. That's just something I go back and forth on because I like to joke around a lot and I like to, uh, you know, not take this life, so, this temporary life so seriously. But I think through that is actually like taking the real way seriously. I think like, through taking this crazy chaotic world not seriously, we we um, we we align with the way to take that seriously. I don't know. I'm just ranting. I'm just rambling. <laughs> That's just the way I see it, I guess. Oh man. Yeah, I'm glad that I can come on here and do this and just uh, just speak to a camera. <laughs> it's a very cathartic thing to do, and. Uh, yeah, I'm glad if uh, for anyone that's here. I don't know if there's really anybody here. I was just talking to myself. I seem like a crazy person, but yeah, I, just, I thank anybody that is here watching, or well, that we're watching the future. It's kind of weird. I usually have somebody to bounce ideas off of, but just kind of rambling to a camera. It's a unique experience. It's kind of like a therapy. It's like therapeutic, you know, because like you have, we all have thoughts in our head, but when you actually express them in an audible form, it's like a different kind of energetic transfer. You know, it's kind of like the om, om, or certain mantras. It's like aligning yourself with the vibration. Like when you actually audibly hear it rather than internally hearing it, it seems to be like a, um, a different way to, I don't know, analyze your energy, analyze to, to transmute energy, I guess. Yeah, man. But yeah, the resurrection... It's here, bro. There's, there's no going back. We're, we're all re we're going through some kind of awakening right now. The world is like I can just tell by all the people that I talk to. We're going through some kind of process of people just uh, wanting more, like just people just figuring out more about what life is because you know we're just fed up. I think everybody's just getting fed up with the struggles and the suffering of our life, and we have nowhere else to to really go to we have nowhere else to look to than 
within the kingdom, you know? Because if you keep trying to look without, you keep trying to look on the outside world for comfort, it's never going to happen. It's just a hamster wheel of disappointment. And somehow, some way, I'm always interested in people's catalyst to that change. But somehow, some way, there is the catalyst to change, to know, to take care of yourself, to really cultivate that within. And it's all happening. For, it's all happening right now. We're all going through that, slowly but surely. The, the world is gonna go through that. It might take a little bit of time, but slowly but surely, we're all gonna go through that and transmit the energy of love to the whole world. And we created create a totally different reality for ourselves, man. Um, I have hope, even though the world that we live in doesn't really uh, give us that hope. It seems if you watch the news or you know, you're on social media too much or you just get lost in the sauce a little too much. It's hard to find that hope. But like I said, that's without. That hope doesn't lie in other people's manifestations of how they see the world. Because every opinion and everything you see online is everybody else's. It's somebody else's idea. It's somebody's opinion. You're not going to find that from anybody else. You're not going to find that from me. You're not going to find that from any symbol. You have to use the symbols to point the way to you inside you're not gonna find that anywhere in the world I'm telling you man you're not gonna find it through pleasure you're not gonna find it through feeling good it might even be easier to find it through pain and suffering but you're it, it's you're not gonna find it on the outside world it's up to all of us every single one of us that's why we're here we're here to find that within realize what we truly are what it truly means to be a human being and we resurrect the consciousness of the man Jesus and other ascended masters as well. Jesus wasn't the only one. I really, I really believe that. I don't think Jesus was the only one to live in that spirit. When we resurrect, we'll just say it's Easter. We'll say Jesus. We'll resurrect the spirit of Jesus within all of us to one bring us happiness, to bring ourselves to a happiness, to love ourselves, and then from that love, we spread it like a virus to the world. That's why we're here. It's that simple. I mean, I can't tell you what to do and how to spread that love and how to find it. I can give you suggestions. Other people can give you suggestions. But ultimately, it's up to all of us to usher in the second coming of the Christ for this world. Oh, man. All right. Just had to get that one off the chest. Uh, yeah, I hope everybody has a good day. You know, do your thing everything's gonna be all right you know what i'm saying like no matter what happens in your life it's all gonna be okay we're all here for a reason it might not seem like it at times but we're all here for the purpose of enlightening ourselves to our true being to love we're all just here to love and find out what that means to you because it means to it means something different for everybody like that's the purpose like there was the one and the one, some may say God, the one created the many, us, to experience the phenomena of love. Uh, and the phenomena of love is infinite in every person. It's different for me. It's different for you. It's different for the guy down the street. The phenomena of love is, is continually and infinitely creating itself every day. And that's why we're here. We're to experience that and spread that like a virus. And love brings more love. It's the most contagious virus in the history of, of being a human being. That's why we're here. Spread the love. Uh, just be a good person. It's that simple. Just don't be a dick. It's that simple, man. What's the reason we're here? To be a good person. Don't be a dick. That's it. It's that simple. See others as you see yourself. It's hard to do. It's definitely hard to do. I understand. But there's no other way to live, man. That's why we're here. That's what we're doing. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think that's all I really need to get off my chest. I appreciate anybody. I don't even know if anybody's watching. I don't know how to do this. I appreciate anybody that has watched or will watch this thing in the future. Hope everybody has a great Easter. And, and you know, I don't, I'm not really into like the traditions of Easter or anything. I just figured what better day than to start this whole thing off than on the day of resurrection. But, you know, it, it's like I said, 
it's all up to us to be the resurrection, to live the resurrection. We are all Christ. We're not Jesus Christ, but we all have the Christ in our hearts. And from that, uh, we create a better world. So let's do that. Let's keep doing that. Let's keep living our life. Um, and let's keep loving, man. Have some fun, you know? That's what it's all about. Don't Enjoying it. You know, aligning yourself with this way is really making makes yourself happier, brings yourself to a, a more peaceful state, ultimately. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want peace? That's what we all want. We all want peace and liberation. So that's the only words of wisdom, I guess, or, you know, for the, whatever words came out of my mouth uh, that I can give to you today. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for tuning in. I hope everybody keeps tuning in. I got some good people I'm talking to in the future. Um... But yeah, love is the way. Love is the way. Love is the only truth. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. It's to love. All right, y'all. I'm going to go finish eating this apple. I've been holding this the whole time and haven't really eaten it. Uh, peace out.